understandest what thou readest in the King James Version, we're going to look at two quick false friends, meat and cattle. And I do want to keep this quick. Here's the word cattle in Genesis 1, and here's the word meat. These are the first instances of these two words in the King James Version. Let's talk about them. You know, there are not a few people out there who scoff at the idea that the King James is hard to read. They recognize that the King James doesn't talk like we do, but they think our English is just degraded compared to Elizabethan English, and they think contemporary readers ought to be able to figure out what the King James is saying by looking at contexts such as these. And actually, they have a point. If you read very carefully, if you are a very perceptive reader, you are aware of the idea that language can change over time, then you might see something in both of these uses right in Genesis 1 that indicates step one in our process for discovering false friends, noticing a contextual conflict. In this case, God said, let us make man in our image, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The thing that you might notice is that it seems kind of odd for God to be speaking so generally in the rest of this passage, but then choose one animal, cows, to mention here. Well, then maybe cattle meant more than cows. In fact, it did. It meant livestock back in that time, as we will see. Likewise with meat, you might notice a contextual conflict here. By the way, this is, a, this is the King James on the right and the ESV on the left in Logos Bible software on my iPad. Here, to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, God has given every green herb for meat. He isn't talking about veggie burgers. Meat here just means food. Again, a contextual conflict might indicate to you that there's something else going on here. This is not the way we use those words. Ezekiel 34 talks about flocks of cattle. That's another way that you might discover that cattle is, uh, is another contextual conflict you might use to discern that cattle doesn't mean now what it used to mean. So yes, a diligent and careful reader might notice these things. There are other contexts, however, in the New Testament and the Old Testament where even good readers of the King James will get tripped up, I think, by this difficulty, which I would call unnecessary. For example, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, number 713 and many other top passages talk about something that the King James Version calls a meat offering. Look at it. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them were full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. This verse and others like it, I read for years, and I'm sorry, but I pictured country fried steak. Without really thinking about it, I thought, well, when you mingle fine flour with oil in your meat offering, you get sort of a breaded meat. But meat in 1611 wasn't the flesh of animals. It was fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. That's all the meat offering consisted in, fine flour mingled with oil. It was actually an extremely abrasive King James Only preacher on YouTube who taught this to me, and I just had to laugh. Uh, I've been at this false friends thing for a good while now, and new ones hit me all the time. I don't care where I learned them from. This man mocked, I mean roasted, all the alleged idiots and fools. Those are his words who didn't notice this. Well, I must be an idiot and a fool. Step one of noticing a false friend is noticing it through contextual conflict or checking of other translations. And in fact, if you just go back to Genesis 1 and look at the way the ESV translates these two words, I'll put them back in the same place they were, the ESV has for cattle, uh, livestock. Okay, that's a more general word. And then instead of meat in at the end of the chapter, it has food. So either way, if you're a really sharp reader or if you're checking other translations, you might notice that something funny is going on here with the English of the words cattle and meat. So our next step is to look up the underlying Hebrew in this case words. Sure enough, the underlying Hebrew word for cattle in the Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament, a responsible lexicon, is uh, animals in general, or beasts, or domestic animals slash cattle. Uh, I've never referred to cattle as in my English as anything but cows. Maybe there are people in the business uh, who do so, I don't know. Then the word meat, if we look that one up, in the same responsible lexicon, we get food or nourishment. So sure enough, 
we've almost got enough now already to conclude that there's a false friend. We've still got to check some more. Uh, we'll check some contemporary dictionaries and the Oxford English Dictionary. But I also want us to turn over to the New Testament. I'm going to go to a passage of scripture that has meant so much to me throughout my life. Here is Matthew 6.25, part of the Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to highlight that so I can easily find it later. He says, Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? The Greek word trafe means, according to Bauer, Donker, Art, and Gingrich, a responsible lexicon, nourishment or food. Again, just like Hebrew, a word that is specific in our English must have been more general in King James English. I highly doubt that the King James translators made a mistake here. Instead, English simply must have changed over time. Now, in passages like this one, where you don't really have much contextual hint that you're talking about something other than the flesh of animals, I think we need to remember what C.S. Lewis said about the dangerous sense. He said, the dominant sense of any word lies uppermost in our minds. Wherever we meet the word, our natural impulse will be to give it that sense. And that is definitely what I've done over the years as I read the Sermon on the Mount in the King James Version. I thought Jesus was talking about steak. Is not the life more than steak and the body than raiment? I knew that raiment meant clothing, even though it's not a common word we use today. Our impulse will be to give it that sense, Lewis says. When this operation results in nonsense, of course, like flocks of cattle, we just don't say that, or trees that he's given for meat, that's nonsense, we see our mistake if we're good readers and we try over again. But if it makes tolerable sense, our tendency is to go merrily on. We are often deceived. In an old author, the word may mean something different. I call such senses dangerous senses because they lure us into misreadings. Well, I call them false friends. Now, I challenge even the subtlest reader to manage to remember that everywhere the word meat appears in the King James Version, it means something we never use it to mean in contemporary English. It's one thing to ask people to learn words that they've never heard, like besom and chambering and emerald. You know you don't know those words. But to remember that you have to keep an eye out for words that you use all the time. You used it yesterday when your wife asked you to go out to the grocery and pick up some ground beef in the meat section. You just can't remember that all the time. When the flesh sense works, you're going to use it. Our next step in discovering a false friend is to look it up in a contemporary dictionary to discover what it can mean today. So let's do that. I've taken the liberty to look up these two words in the American Heritage Dictionary. And sure enough, cattle means ruminant mammals of the genus bos. That's a Latin word that just means cows. Meat is similar. If I look up meat, I get the edible flesh of animals, especially that of mammals as opposed to that of fish or poultry. And I don't even see, oh yes I do, nourishment or food. Love is not all, it is not meat nor drink. I'm going to have to say the American Heritage Dictionary should not have that sense or it should mark it as archaic. I've never heard anyone using contemporary English and not quoting poetry. This is elusive, possibly toward the Bible or Shakespeare or something. Here's a poet, Edna St. Vincent Millay. I've never heard anyone use this word this way. Now, our next step is to look up the English words in the Oxford English Dictionary. This is the culminating step because the OED gives us the whole history of the word. And sure enough, right at the beginning, I'm seeing this word obsolete. But that is not our sense. Property, article of property, chattel, that's not what Genesis 1 is talking about. So let's keep on going down. Sense 2 is as an individual singular... Maybe we're in the wrong sense of cattle. No, apparently not. Apparently cattle and chattel are related. Sense three, goods and cattle. Ah, uh, no, that's not the sense. Ah, here we go. The second major division of sense is livestock, a collective term for live animals held as property or reared to serve as food. The application of the term has varied greatly according to the circumstances of time and place and has included camels, horses, asses, mules, oxen, cows, calves, sheep, lambs, goats, swine, etc. That's exactly the way the King James Version uses the word. The tendency in recent times has been to restrict the term to the bovine genus. In other words, cows. But the wider meaning is still found locally and in many combinations. Aha! I've got confirmation that this is a false friend. In my English anyway, in my locale, in my region, 
in America, United States of America, I've never heard anyone use the word cattle to refer to anything other than cows. We've determined we do have a false friend. Now, when it comes to the word meat, let's look up that one. The OED says that the history goes all the way back to, wow, early times, uh, circa 1175 and earlier, back into Old English, basically. And it has senses relating to food generally. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And now it is archaic and regional for someone to speak of food as nourishment for people and fodder for animals, especially solid food, as opposed to drink. This is not the sense that I take it in, which is the flesh of animals. Let's keep looking for that. I don't see that sense yet. Aha, senses relating specifically to flesh, the flesh of animals used as food. We definitely have false friends with cattle and with meat. They're not super hard ones, but I think I'm a good and careful reader of the King James Version, and I didn't realize I was being tripped up by these things. In some places I did, and in other places I didn't. Now I know when I see them in the future to look out for them. Now hopefully thou understandest what thou readest in the King James Version a little better.